Hello everybody, welcome to the class today. I'm Nolan Clark and in this class we're going to be drawing raindrops on a window. So follow along as I show you step by step how we do that. Alrighty, so I got this photo of Pixabay. So you can go and download it off the website if you're a patron. There's the, the color version. There's a grayscale, ver grayscale version. And then there's a, just a rough little sketch template. So I think the first thing we need to do is let's just go and take a look at the photograph a little bit closer. Then we could do some planning on how would we tackle something like this because at first glance it looks to be quite a incredibly complicated drawing doesn't it oddly enough it actually isn't it's a pretty easy drawing to do a little time consuming because you've got lots of drops that you need to do but not a difficult drawing at all. So if you're a beginner, absolutely go ahead, follow along. You're really going to enjoy this one. It's something very different. So when you're drawing raindrops like this, there are two separate components to the drawing. The first one is you've got the background, and then the second one is the glass and the water drops that are on the glass. So you've got sort of two distinct, different things that you're actually drawing here today. So the first thing that you need to draw is obviously now the, the goodies that are in the background. So what you need to realize there is, with this drawing, is what are you actually looking at? In this case, we are actually looking at the water drops and not what's behind the glass. So we're looking at the glass and the water drops on it. Where normally you'd be looking at the scenery beyond the window and sort of ignoring or cutting, your brain would be cutting out what it sees on the glass. So today we've got to flip that around. And the way you do that is take a look really carefully past all those raindrops and you'll see that everything in the background is out of focus and that's what your eyes do when they're looking at something they just make everything else out of focus so that your brain can concentrate on that one thing so that's what we're going to do today we're going to draw the background out of focus and then we put the raindrops in focus and how do we do that how do you put something out of focus you get rid of all the detail. It's as simple as that, really. And then whatever's in the foreground, you put that in detail. So I'm going to show you do that as as we draw. So I think let's go over to the to the drawing paper. So you can see I have just roughly put down those outlines. So to draw those buildings out of focus, what you're going to do is make sure that there are no sharp edges. So bad many are saying is, uh, I'm saying it's easy, but it's only easy for me. But it's not. You'll see when we draw this one, you're going to love this drawing. It's so simple. All right. So what you want to do is just take a scrap piece of paper and then a nice dark pencil, like a 9 or an 8B like that. So what I've got here is a, a 9B graphite stick. So I've got get lots of... Uh, lots of use out of it and then just take a a knife and just scrape over it like this so what you're doing is you're getting yourself some graphite dust so you'll need a fair amount today so what i've got is a i've got a whole little tub full of graphite dust And I'll just pop some out onto a, a scrap piece of paper. And then I've got an old piece of t-shirting material. So this is just a little a sleeve for one of my 
my kids uh, shirts when they were a, a tiny tot and I've been using it ever since you can see is is really dirty already but it works fabulously so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger inside here and just wrap the material around my finger so that I can dip into the graphite dust and then draw with that so what happens is when things are out of focus you lose all your hard edges can you see in the background there's no no real root <laughs> let me try to say that one again there's no real hard edges everything is just soft So yeah, we do now have this building is lighter than the rest. So what I'm going to do is just add a few little marks. Now what is important is as we draw this, we do want it to look like buildings, right? So buildings do conform to perspective. So what will happen is, let's get a scrap piece of paper. Let's put that down over there. And let's draw this, these buildings sort of a little bit more in focus. So you've got your street that's running like this. So as you get close, your buildings are large. So this is what you've essentially got. So you've got a building that's got some windows. And then you've got a, another building next to it, another building next to it, and so on. But now each building gets now progressively smaller towards the towards the, the vanishing point, which is the horizon. So all of these, the tops of those windows over there, and the bottoms of the windows, and the tops of those ones, and the bottom of those ones, all these guys gradually get smaller and smaller towards the vanishing point. So we do need to just keep that in mind so your your distant buildings are only going to be this big like that where the, the this front building over here let's say that little tower goodie you know he's he's going to be much larger or is going to appear much larger even though he's not necessarily larger so we do have to just draw that and the same thing happens here with the road you've got there's there's now our road running along here and here's the sidewalk over here and then there's some buildings happening out that that direction so here's multiple seems to be multiple little buildings happening over there hence the little steps that we've got so all these guys are also going out towards the vanishing point like that so all these buildings let's say the door the top of the door would must have that that angle over there so that it looks correct so obviously everything is out of focus so it's not going to be too difficult to do that but you just have to bear that in mind as you as you are doing these guys all right so there's that lighter building over there you can see i've just given him a little bit of tonal value the next guy he's a little bit darker so we'll add a little bit more um, tonal value down for him. Just by adding more graphite, scrubbing a little bit further or harder and so on into that over there. This here is sort of street level over here. So there's different things happening. So we'll treat that sort of differently. So I'm going to leave myself just a little bit of a, a gap or a different tonal value over there. There's that building over there. What you do want to just concentrate on is make sure that you keep your your verticals vertical. That is important to get your 
your perspective correct as well. This one here seems to be quite dark, so I'll just really coloring him, color him in <laughs> quite, quite hard. So it's nice and dark. There's a little something there, so I'll just use like the side of my finger to to get that in. So by now I've already sort of lost where the little highlights, the headlights, the car is and so on. But that doesn't matter. It's all good. We can just eyeball that in there. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's tackle the... While we're busy with the buildings, we may as well do this one as well. Let's go on the other side of the road. Yeah, so there we go. There's the, there's these buildings. So I'm using a fair amount of graphite dust, as you can see. And I'm not really pressing hard to, to rub this graphite dust in. Just letting it do its own thing as I use a circular motion to get those guys in there. Let's make this guy a little bit darker, use a bit of light. But we don't want him to be. And let's get rid of that little gap there between those buildings. We can use the top of the building to, to see where he is. Awesome. Let's move here to the to the sidewalk. Leave that there. See, I'm leaving myself just a little bit of a gap there. Here's some nice reflecting light. So I'm going to leave that gap there. I quite like that. So I'll just use a bit of a squiggly motion coming down here like that. Here on the road, there's quite a lot of... Because the road is wet, you've got water reflections. So we need to get some kind of a reflective effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say with this building over here, I'm going to reflect per building. Now to get a reflective effect, you just go vertical like strokes. So that if there is a, a stripey effect, it's vertical. And that makes it look like reflection like reflections man i am struggling with the tongue twisters today all right let's see there's some some lighter stuff reflecting over there so i'll leave a bit of a bit of a gap and then obviously you also have the road itself you've got markings on the road and someone that you that you're seeing as well Let's do that. Not too dark over here. Right vicinity. And let's give ourselves a few little road markings. Are you starting to see a, a, a city and a road there already? So we add a few lines like this. And now remember, all these lines need to go to that vanishing point, which is around there. So you're going to have lines over here, lines over there, lines over there, lines over there. And eventually lines over there, like that. So just always stick to that perspective. Then you A for away. Make some of these guys darker, some of them lighter, and so on. Let's see, this guy, he's quite dark, so he's going to definitely give you a nice little reflection over there uh, and then there's a few little lighter guys so that's nice giving some of those guys lighter reflections like that over there 
Awesome. Okay, so what have we done? We haven't done this little um, lamppost over there. So let's see. There's two ways we can do that. You can use a, a paintbrush. Let's bring this guy into, into view over here. So you'll just dip your paintbrush in there. Because this is now out of focus, the paintbrush is going to give you that nice out of focus effect. Let's just do that. And then we sweep all those crumbs away there, the, the dust away. You can see what that looks like. And the other way you can do it is using, say, uh, one of these cotton buds. So also you just roll your cotton bud in there just to load it up with some graphite. And then you can sketch out your lamppost. There, like that. All right, so we've got lots. Can you see all the graphite dust just lying over here? So I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to just blow it all off for now. <laughs> Alrighty. So let's get a little bit of... the. There are a few little clouds in the sky. So let's get that as well. So I'm going to take this guy and just out here to the side of the... On my side. Just give it a good old shake. Just to get rid of any excess. Because we've been using <laughs> lots of graphite dust. So just to get rid of that excess over there. And I'm going to just give this guy a light little wipe across like this. So what you're doing now is just getting rid of the white of the paper. And even over here, I'll give that to just a light little wipe over there. He's not pure white either. Yeah, that was pretty quick, easy, and painless. Alrighty. So now I'm going to take my kneaded eraser. Yeah, just in a ball shape is good enough. And let's see, there's a, there's a cloud out this vicinity. So I'm just going to sort of drag that out. And tap it out. Don't go over your building. So he ends up around there. There's another one at this vicinity. So now this rounded edge of the... of the needed eraser gives you a bit of a, a cloudy effect over there. There's another cloud floating all around here. Yeah, that should do the trick there. All right, let's grab the cloth. And let's add a few little darker bits. Some darker sky bits. I'm just going to use just a circular motion. And that gives you a... a a bit of a sky cloudy kind of feel. So just check where you can't see the cloud quite as well and just strategically darken up around that, like that. So I'm seeing now my uh, tower is looking a little bit like the Tower of Pizza. So let me just straighten him up a little bit. I'm sitting slightly to the side when I draw for the camera, then uh, so that you... And that obviously makes it difficult for me to to judge the perspective. That looks better, hey? <laughs> no, it's not going to fall over. And I see this guy's got a nice little spire over there. So let's use the... Let's 
the cotton bud to add that spire on over there. Let's get rid of as much of that dust as we can now. And let's start adding some detail. Little bits of detail that we do need to add to this guy. So here we can see this guy is now lighter. But there is a, a darker patch at the top here. So I'm just going to use, this is a a 9B. It's the, the from the General Pencil Company. It's a 9XXB. So it's really... It's, it's close to a charcoal pencil. So I'm not going to press hard, as light as I can. I want to let the, the pencil give me the darkness out of its own. Otherwise we're going to battle with the, with the raindrops later. I don't want to be pressing hard now. Besides, everything's out of focus anyway. So, so now I'm going to just add myself a suggestion of these windows. Am I going to copy them exact? No, not at all. But I am just doing following that little perspective. So I'm making these guys slightly smaller and those guys slightly bigger, and I'm following that line. Just quick little colorings like this. See this one here seems these these are a few bigger windows over here, so let's do that. Yeah, that's cool over there. Let's we could maybe take our eraser. And let's lift out some lighter guys in on, on this building over here. Remember, at the end of the day, all this is, because it's out of focus, you're not really going to be looking at this. You're looking at the water drops. So all you need to do is just add some suggestions of stuff. Here, I can see it's sort of lighter running down there. So I'm going to just Tap a few dashes out. Just pinch the um, the needed eraser into like a chisel point, and you just tap out a few little marks like that. Yeah, we've got that. Must be a bit of signage or something that's that's lit up over here. So same thing, I'm just going to lift it up even more. Just tap over it there like that. Here's something over here that's also a little bit lighter. Maybe some more signage or something that's in the shop. So obviously if this was some place that you that you know, you can just look for any very distinct um, features. For example, there's a little sign. You know, if maybe that's a famous coffee shop or something and that's the sign, you know, then you'd then you'd put in just a little bit of effort to suggest those very distinct um Features and stuff. Here seems to be a little car. So you see, every now and again, I'm just folding this guy over, just so I'm working with a, a new cleaner piece. And all these little suggestions that you're putting in here, your brain is going to fill in all the details for you when you when you're looking at the actual when you're looking at the actual uh, final drawing. There's something over there. Let's see. This here comes down. 
a little bit lighter down here so I'm just gently dragging over that just to get a few little marks and things don't make it too light and then on this side we also need to just suggest some stuff so all I'm going to do is maybe just follow that um, perspective line over there and maybe just drag just using this like a real flat piece of the eraser just drag out a few random marks and a few vertical ones yeah that's cool look at that L looks like we've got tons of detail there but we've got nothing <laughs> that's pretty cool okay let's see what else do we have we've got that car there and and there's also this there's some red dots over there i don't think we can really i've put my little car and stuff a little bit too close there so those red dots are missing but we definitely want that car that'll be cool because that's got nice those lovely reflections so i'm going to take my my mono eraser just in a circular motion so be careful now um you do not just need to As you lift them out, not make them too big. Like that. And obviously those those lights are reflecting in the in the wet road. So I'm gonna lift it out over here, give it a little gap, and then lift it out almost as light as the lights themselves. And then you just drag downwards like this so that it sort of comes straight down but almost like fades out as you go down like that and let's take a look we've done a few little goodies over there so let's see if we can just reflect them as well inside the inside the road. So I'm going to go back to my cloth, dip it in some um, some of the graphite, like over here. Can you see there's something and there's something that's light? There's nothing light over here, so that there's a dark little, almost maybe like an alley or something. So I'm going to make sure that that guy is reflecting over there, maybe there in between those two signs. It's dark over there. So reflect that down. There's maybe a gap and then that reflects down dark over there. Like that. There we go. See, so you, you see now it looks like it looks like things are reflecting. Alrighty. So somehow I have I'm sitting digital at a table and I've somehow managed to lose my <laughs> lose my needed eraser. <laughs> oh well. Luckily I've got a little piece of blue tech here, so I'm gonna just continue with that. There's that little lighter bit over there, so I'm gonna just tap out with that. How on earth does something disappear and you you're sitting still? explain that one to me is it just me or has that happened to you as well <laughs> there we've made that suggestion of a car so i'm just gonna drag him out just a little bit lighter as well let's see yeah i'm not seeing anything really else after that Let's just get that guy solid again because he's not in front of the clouds. And when we lifted out the clouds, he went thinner here and there at a, at a spot. I 
Alrighty, so my hands are pretty dirty now, so I'm gonna just give them a give them a clean. Before we continue, I want to briefly tell you about my real-time paint and draw along art classes on my website. For a very small amount, you can get access to over 400 paint and draw along tutorials where you pack out your art supplies and you follow along as I show and explain to you in step-by-step -step detail how to complete each project. There are classes in acrylic, oil, watercolor, pencil, soft pastel and even lesser known mediums like pen and ink and scratch boarding. There's a link in the description below. Take a look. You'll be amazed at the awesome classes available there. Alrighty, let's continue from where we left off. Alrighty, there we go. Now we're good to go again. So now I, d I just want to keep this in, in a good condition. So what I am going to do working now is just use a bit of transparency and just lay that down so that my hand can go over that and he doesn't get all dirty again. So now we've got to start doing all these raindrops. So let me explain to you how raindrops work. If we have a table lying like this, and you're looking at that raindrop from the side, if it's a big drop, it's going to lie like that. Because water has surface tension, so the molecules stick to each other, and that's why you get that rounded effect. So if the sun is coming from here, if this was, let's say, a, a solid object, maybe a P or something like that, then your highlight would be here and the shadow would be over there. But because the water is transparent, what happens is the light goes through here and it gets to here and then it's got nowhere to go. So this becomes your highlight. And then this here becomes your shadow side. So your highlight and your shadow side swap around. And then obviously this guy does have height, so he casts a, he casts a shadow over there. So if we had a look at this guy from the side, you would have, say, something like this. Your light's coming from there, so that's your highlight. So here's your shadow side. So it's round, so it's, it's a nice gradual rounded shading, like that. That's your highlight side, so he stays light, and then you have a cast shadow. So right up against the object, the shadow is always at its darkest. And then he fades out like that. So what also happens is your water drop itself is um, shiny. So anything that's shiny gets a reflection. So you always hear on, and that reflection happens here on the sun side. So let's just lift out that reflection. Where's my my mono eraser? And and that's how you get your your water drops to look wet is that little reflection over there. So now here on, on the glass, what's happening is it's not lying like this. It's lying a little bit differently. So let's extend that guy out. Because this would happen on, like, let's say, for example, a tabletop or something like that. But now our glass is vertical. So it's sitting like that. So big drops generally don't collect. They're going to run down. So if you do have a big drop... is going to be sitting there like that. And if it's a, if it gets any bigger, it's going to run. So in general, most of these drops that you're going to see are just going to be like that. So 
So what happens then is that you get a sharp edge on that on that drop and that drop can become an all sorts of funny shapes because it's now sticking to itself and it's sticking to the glass so you get the most random shapes in general though you can think of them as as ovals and and uh and as circles but in general they're more oval shaped like this and then what happens is because you're seeing you're looking now through that it becomes like a lens so then you get basically an upside down view of what's behind that water drop let's maybe let's go and take a look at the photo and I can show you that let's zoom in on this drop over here look at that there's that tower of ours is upside down there's our uh, our street light and there's the building on the opposite side of the road so let's go out so keep your eye on this water drop over here as I go out so this in inside that is this building over here the tower is there and the uh, the street light is over there, but as you can see, everything is now upside down. So that's what we now need to paint. And then obviously you can also see something quite interesting. Our light. If you look on these drops over here on the right hand side, the highlight or the sun or the sky is sort of on the right hand side obviously on the bottom because it's upside down and if you look at these guys on the left the light is now towards the right uh, left hand side and also on the bottom that tells you that you are standing here if you're looking that way the light you're seeing those rays of light let's go back to the paper You, you're seeing the rays, you're standing here. So when you're standing here and you're looking that way, you're seeing the rays of light that are coming that direction. If you're standing here, we're looking that direction, you're seeing the rays of light that are going in that direction. So that's why that little highlight flips around, or that sun bit flips around from here or here, depending on how you're looking at those, those water drops, if they're on the left or on the right hand side. And then here in the center, you can see that they, they're nicely at the bottom. So you can look out for that as well. But you have tons of water drops to do now. So don't, don't spend time trying to get every water drop. Oh, I just found my, <laughs> my needed eraser. He was under this little cloth over here. That's why I couldn't see him. He was, I didn't even expect to look there. That cloth is so small. Yay. I'm not going mad after all. Alrighty, so you have lots of drops to draw now. So what I'm going to do is we'll start off with the the Tombow eraser. And I think let me just I'm just gonna over go over to that camera for a second so that I can zoom in a bit. So what happens, we now have a random shape that we need to work out into this over here. So I'm going to start off with the eraser and I'm always going to erase the, the highlight. So that's sort of, think of it as one side of your water drop. 
Now I'm going to take a nice dark pencil. So again, I'll stick with my my 9XB pencil. And I'm going to draw the other side. So what I'm interested in initially is just that silhouette. Now I'm going to take that silhouette and I'm going to give it a bit of a, a bit of a shading towards the inside like that and then obviously we've now get all sorts of little reflections and stuff inside you so I'll add a few little marks in there as well and there you go there's your first water drop so uh, let me do let me do one or two of them so you get while while I'm zoomed in you get little smaller water drops then we're just gonna just lift out a little speck and that's good enough sometimes I'll even just use my my jelly roll pen I'll just use this guy and even add little extra highlights in there as well so you can just that gives you nice little bright ones I like to add a nice little shadow on each of those because it needs to contrast against the, the background. So that's why the background, we haven't gone super dark, but here in the foreground we're going to. So that's the difference between this here, now looking in focus and, and we're looking at the water drops versus what we've done in the background. In the background we've kept everything out of focus with no hard edges, but here we need to get those nice sharp edges. All right, let me do one more close up while I'm at it. Let's maybe do one over here. So to lift out that highlight bit. Like that. Remember, don't make them all perfect little ovals. Give them all sorts of random shapes. Put that in. Nice and dark on that side. Alrighty, so over here, that tower would reflect over there. So let's get that tower in over there. And let's get that in over there. So what you can do now is, because this now comes out as a as a hard line, you can now come back in and just give him a bit of a shading. Just by tapping over that inside edge over there. That gives you a a shading. And then sometimes maybe there's a maybe there's a something else that's reflecting over there. A little dark a dark edge to this guy. Okay, let's stand back and see what it looks like. That's pretty cool, eh? Right, I'm just setting up the other camera again, making sure he's all focused and stuff. Okay, let's go back to there. All right, so what I do is using this is great and you can see it works perfectly but what i like to do when i'm doing something like this you have lots and lots and lots and lots of drops to do i'm going to use an electric eraser so like i say you don't have to have one but if you do have one it makes these water drops just go so much quicker so needless to say we're definitely not going to do so many water drops today I, I think you'd fall asleep before we get halfway through that so we'll just do a, a bunch enough for you to see so i'll try and do um a few variations and stuff to give you a good uh a good feel for how, how these guys work and then i'll leave you to tackle the rest and then you'll be able to see the rest in the um if in the in the final picture on the website I always add that to the to the PDF that you can go and download. Right, so I'm going to take this and just use that tip like that. So I'm going to work literally 
straight down. I find if you do like this, you don't have much control over it. Well, you don't have much control over a, an electric eraser anyway. He tends to run off and do, do his own thing. But if you use that tip over there, then it doesn't run around as much. So now what I'm going to do is let's bring this guy back in again. Some of these drops, if you're working from a reference, are going to be quite prominent. And I'm going to concentrate on those prominent ones. And I'm going to get them done first. Because they're prominent, that's what the person would look at when he's looking at your drawing. For example, that guy over there, he, he, he has to be drawn because you can see that beautiful reflection in him. So I look at those, those bigger ones. And I'll tackle them. Can you see how nice and quick and easy it lifts out these uh, these reflections for you? So now remember, as you lift out these little highlights, on this side, the highlights are going to be on the right. And on the other side, the highlights are going to be on the left. As you come down here, you're going to have less bright highlights. But initially, I'm still going to put them in as normal. Then you'll just dull down them as, as you go. over here our highlights are all going to be on the on the left hand side okay so now you've got some nice big ones in place ready to be done so while you're at it and you've got your eraser i'm gonna just pop in a bunch of small little ones at the same time just by tapping now the way i put these guys in to make it look natural because you're probably not going to put in as many as you've done on the as you see on the photo unless you're a, a very patient person I'm not, so I'm not going to put in as many. So you want to put them in so that they look natural and, and random. So tell yourself a little story about families. You're going to have, maybe there's a, a dad over there, he's big, and then there's a mom, and, sh and then maybe they've got one or two little kids. Then over here, on, on, on the other side of the street, there's a, just a husband and a wife. They like walking together often, so they look like that. Then over here, just behind this guy, so he's, he's not across the road, he's just across the wall, there's, there's a kindy. So there's a whole bunch of little little kids. And, and they're having a race. So some of them are, are up, up front here, uh, quite close to each other. And some of them are, are scraggling here at the back. Then over here, what, what can we have? Maybe there's a, a movie theater. So there's a whole bunch of different people. So you know a lot of people like to sit in the back and a few people like to sit in the front. So and then you always get a few little bachelors that like to live in between and do their own thing. So can you see how by telling myself this silly little story I've managed to get completely random little markings on the paper. With if you just look at them you you, you would have no you couldn't, you couldn't recognize any kind of a pattern. 
So that's what you want to do when you lift out all these other guys is make sure that they're nice and random. So by telling yourself these little stories like this, you can uh, quickly get this thing to look very random. Awesome. So there's that. And now I'm just going to go ahead and put in the darker bits. So this one here was quite important. So I'm actually following the the reference photo. And I'm trying to get that reasonably accurate. Because what happens is these one or two little guys that you have now put in that are accurate. You're going to look at them. And oh, look at that. You can actually see the reflections of these buildings and stuff inside that. Then all the other ones that you've just done quite randomly, your 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 brain is going to say, oh, you know what, this is also um, reflections of these buildings and things. But meantime, it's not. You've just done, you've just done your own thing. Clever, eh? <laughs> That's how you how you be lazy, but still make it look accurate. So with these small little drops, I'll often just work on giving them like some form of an outline. It doesn't have to be a solid outline, but just some form of an outline. That's that's enough. Then with other ones, what you want to do is you want to give just a little bit of a shading in them. So let's say maybe put one over here. So there I've got just a bit of a a bit of a marking. So this is now representing that tower. So I'm following the the um the photograph itself but now because of that rounding like we had with these water drops over here you also get some of those guys getting a shading so then i'll just go over to a, a standard 8b and i will add a bit of a shading in on that edge over there just to show that this water drop is a little bit rounder then the other guys. So you, that shading is darker on the outside, lighter towards the inside. And remember to leave that nice bright area over there for your highlight. And that makes that guy look natural. And I can see there's quite a few of these guys over here. And they, they are reasonably big. So I'm going to add the, that shape in over there. Go over here and just shade that guy out. So I know he has to be dark on the outside edge. Lighter going up. Then in here, that's this building over here reflecting. His roof is reflecting inside that guy over there. And here I can see there's something else reflecting. Maybe over here this guy will add a bit of a, just a bit of a highlight on him. Because he's quite in the middle of nowhere over there. So Julie did the 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 bee. I haven't seen your bee, Julie. Have I? It would be nice if you can. Uh, Show me what your your bee drawing looks like from the previous class. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly 
Add in a few more of these. I'm going to go a lot quicker. You know now what I'm doing. So I'll do them at, at normal speed. So in each one of these, I'm, I am not just suggesting those little those details. I'm looking for the where, where can I add that little tower is, is probably the most important reflection to add in there. The little guys, they just get a little mark or a little shadow or whatever. Nice sharp edges. Okay, can you see how quick it goes when you when you are on a on a roll? But not bad whatsoever. Let's maybe give this one here a bit of a shading towards the inside. Like that. That'll bring out that little reflection of our of our tower a bit better as well. Let's maybe make this guy quite a bit bigger. Fade him out too, seeing as he's nice and big. Alrighty. So now let's maybe do just one or two little water drops that are running as well because that always adds just a bit of interest and then we know how to do that too there we go let's maybe do this guy over here with a bit of a shading let's see he's quite an odd little odd shape and that's cool let's keep him an odd shape let's do that Oh, random marks there over there. That nice and dark. Yeah, like that. Let's see. There's our tower reflecting in him over there. So to get a water drop running down, let's go back to this guy over here. So you've got, so we're going to look at him from the side, like that. So there's your, there's your window, and there's the end of the water drop. So what happens with that water is that it's not completely gone, it sort of trails off. It gets thinner and thinner and thinner until eventually it does trail off. So here you've got little areas of height. And because of the surface tension... It tends to bow higher and lower. How, how can I show you that? If you look at this from that direction, so there's the glass lying f like that, and are you looking up past this guy over here? Then that water over there is going to be doing this. See that? So you've got a little height over there and a little height over there. It picks up a reflection and that picks up a reflection. So let, let's do that and, and then it will instantly make sense the minute I've done that. You've seen it a million times but you've just never really looked. 
and concentrate it on, on, on looking at your little water drops. So I'm going to go to my Tombow eraser and let's maybe see if we can zoom in on that. So let's Awesome. Let's go there. All right, so let's put in, let's say, something that's running down over here. So I'm going to just start and add myself just a little bit of a, a squiggly line. That water doesn't run down perfectly straight. It squiggles a little bit. So there's your squiggly line. Then just to the side of it, I'm going to start with another squiggly line. Roughly following the other one. Now I'm going to come to different places. And here I can see there's already naturally a little bit lighter. Without any pressure on this uh, eraser. Just going to go over there so it lifts it out a little bit more. Maybe over here I can see this on the right hand side. He's lighter over there. So I'm going to just lift him out a little bit more there on the inside of it. And that's giving you that... Um, that rounded effect over there. Let's go a little bit broader so we can get to the tip. And now you're going to fade that tip and, and shade him the same as what you would do a standard water drop. So we've got that rounding over there. So remember our light is coming from this side. So your highlight goes over here like this. And I need to just fade that out. So I'm just going to tap on those edges over there. And now we get to our pencil. Let's make this edge over here dark. We need to use our XB. Get that nice and dark over there. Oh, no, he's going to fade. So I'm going to shade this guy as though he's uh, rounded over here. So I'm going slightly in. I think I'll, I'll do one of these guys on the paper for you. It'll make a little bit more sense. Like that. And then you do need to just work in a little bit of a... A little bit of a reflection onto him as well like that so let's first stand back just so that you can see the the oval effect there you go nice eh? all righty thanks julie i'm looking forward to uh to seeing your your bee if you're on instagram you can also when you finish one of my one of my classes you can just use the hashtag paint basket and then I'll obviously no no spaces, hashtag paint basket. Then I'll also see it. Alright, so let's draw one of those over here as well. Just so that you can see it. I'm gonna do it with with a wide background. So what you have is your little squiggly line that runs like this. And then you've got your rounding. Same as that guy over there. Got your rounding like that. Okay, so our sun is coming from that direction. So now inside here, I'm going to have to do it. I'm, I'm putting in some darker bits where you're now lifting out the highlight bits. But you've just got a little bit of variation in tonal value in that piece. And that instantly makes him look like he's, he's trailing off. The magic happens here. Okay, so I'm shading this guy like this. As though that's a an oval. Shading him lighter and lighter towards the inside. Then obviously he's going to cast a shadow over here. Which starts off dark against the object. Light as we go out. And that gives him, him his height. So that height is disappearing over there. So the shadow becomes shorter and shorter over here. So that's what you've got over there. 
Now also just to get that tie in from here into there to show that height disappears. You just, as you round it in this way, you round it out. As you round it in this way, there you round it out that way. See there. And instantly you've got that little height is disappearing on you. And you've got your reflection. And there's your running water drop. Running down there like that. And that's what we've done over here now. So I'm not going to cast a shadow to get that height because it's glass. You're not really going to see any shadow. If you do really want to put in a shadow, it's got to be a light one. Because maybe your glass is see-through, so it's not really going to... It's not going to have a dark shadow like you would have on a table. Yeah, so basically you would just go ahead and add more and more and more of these water drops. So I think, I think you've got the idea now. It's pretty simple. Hey, Pad Mini, it wasn't difficult after all, wasn't, was it? <laughs> so I think let's... Yeah, I think let's let's head out to over there. It's really easy. I think you've got the trick. Just carry on adding those water drops. So thanks for joining me in the class today. Good luck with your water drops. I'll see you next time. So guys in the live class, if you've got any questions, go ahead, fire away. I'm, I'm here to listen. And then in the next class, we will be doing a uh, a hedgehog. Who was it that uh, wanted to know how to draw a hedgehog? Let's go and take a look. If you want to know uh, how to draw something, go to the website. The link is at the bottom there. And then you go to the Have Your Say page. And you, you leave your suggestion over there. Yeah, so Chris wanted to know how to draw hedgehogs. So yeah, we're going to be drawing hedgehogs for Chris in the in the next pencil drawing class in two weeks' time. Obviously, if you're watching the replay, it will it'll be there. It may be here already. Just go and take a look. So um, Naim is asking, won't I add the red lights? Um, you could. You could. It's it's easy to turn this guy into a into a colored pencil drawing. Now, you could, because you basically you've got your your tonal values in, and and things are dark and grey. Let me see if I can find some some pencils. Let's do something like that. Why not? Why not? Let's go to Let me just get zoomed out on that camera again. Yeah, let's go to here. So I'm just gonna use a just a plain set of colored pencils. And let's see, we need some red and we need some blues. There's like a yellow ochre kind of color there as well, eh? So I'm just picking out those colors. Bit of a sky, a sky blue. So what I've got here is just those guys over there. Oh, and a bit of a yellowy color for the for the headlight of the car. Yes, maybe that's that yellow over there. Because now you can just go over this. So 
So let's add that in here in this vicinity. This guy here was this was the the yellow oakery bits. So what you may need to do here now, if you're going to add color, is just lift out the 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 graphite just a little bit lighter because you know obviously um adding tonal value back in there so you're losing some of the the light so you you'd have to just lift this out a little bit lighter so that you can actually see the you see the color because now that color is now adding its own darkness on top of darkness so you just need to make this a little bit a little bit lighter so that you can get your your tonal values in there let's see where did we have those red dots over around here right eh? We'll just add them in over there. Maybe it's a, the the park lights of a car, or the brake lights, because these are all cars that are now parked along the side here. There's a bit of a bit of coloring over there. So I'm just literally just shading that. And then in here. Just a really basic shading on in these areas. Because what happens is you've got the same, you've got the shadings and stuff already there. So all you need to do is just put a, a flat layer of color down over here. So there is now when you if you're gonna add color like this, there is now one trick that you do need to take care of, and that is that these colors would now also reflect in the in the corresponding places inside your water drops so just bear with me as i add in these colors you can see it's literally just basic shadings I'm not trying to do any fancy tricks here Add a little bit of the blue inside the inside the clouds here and there as well. Maybe here is a bit more of a break in the cloud, so that's why making this a little bit more, a little bit more prominent. Yeah, now you can fiddle around with a few other colors if you want to. Just adding splashes of color here and there. So let's see, maybe over here we can lift out a little something and add some green in over there and so on. It definitely will add a lot more life, eh? So now remember that all these colors would now reflect in the water drops. So you'd need to come back in here and add some of these, like say the blues here in the sky.
and then you'd have maybe let's see let's put say let's see if we can get this red a little bit more prominent so remember the it's going to be on the opposite side so we'll add just a touch of red speck of red on each of these guys it's not a big but it's and then on here it's got to be on the opposite side and it's not just showing that those um, reds are also reflecting in there as well Just a moment, it's opposite side and upside down. All right, so if you um battling to find jelly roll pens, the, the best thing is um, just do a Google search. At worst, you're going to be able to order it off Amazon. It will cost you a few dollars to uh, have it shipped over to you. And then, let's see what else can we do. Let's maybe find just like a, a brownie kind of a color. And then, um, Julie's asking, does the mono eraser only come in one size? Yes, it only comes in one size. And let's maybe give this, this building here just a a hint of another color as well. So I'm just using a brownie kind of color. Oh, there's some water drops I never, I never did. <laughs> you want to keep all these colors quite muted. Remember, it's all out of focus stuff. So don't go any anything too vibrant. In the background, yeah, because then what's going to happen? It's going to start attracting too much attention, and you don't want that. The tension must be here in the water drops. They they the guys that you that you want to be looking at. So there's a little something that I've seen over there that I can make a a different color. Let's maybe add something like this. I don't want to add too much colors in the in the background simply because it's going to attract too much attention. Got to keep them very muted. So I think I'll, I'll leave it at that. What the heck? So you can build it up and, and decide how far you want to go with your uh, with your coloring. Like I say, the more color you add, you've got to just remember to uh, to reflect them in those water drops as well, in in roughly the correct place, upside down, back to front, and back to front depending on which side you looking at that water drop from because that now flips over on either side of you so just bear that in mind alrighty guys I'm not seeing any new questions you have yourself a fantastic uh, weekend next week we're painting on the um, on the other drawing channel or on the other paint basket channel the, the painting channel and what are we painting let's go and have a quick look we are painting smoke. Smoke. Marie wanted to know how to paint smoke. So it's a portrait um, of a, a dude. So it's a nice little monochrome uh, portrait of somebody lighting a cigarette from the side. It's a really nice, beautiful, dramatic painting. So if you enjoy painting, um, join me for that guy, that live class as well. Otherwise, two weeks time, I'll catch you for the hedgehog. Cheerio. Take care.